Hi, I'm James Catherall, co-founder of Catherall Audio. This video has been highly requested and I receive a lot of messages about this, especially after we posted the Arcadia Audio Tour video, which you can check out right here if you haven't seen it yet. That high school has their mic cable set up in a daisy chain. We'll discuss it more in just a second, but first, let's talk about why you would want to use this method. In the marching arts, you have a very limited window of time to get all of your mics plugged in and ready to go. Like we're talking two to three minutes maximum. There are two major methods of setting up your cables. One is using a stage snake like this to plug all your cables in. The other is what's commonly referred to as daisy chaining. The first method is the most straightforward way to hook up all your mics. You have a stage snake connected to the inputs of your mixer, then run that over to your mallet instruments. From there, each mallet instrument takes the XLR cable from their microphone and runs it over to the snake to plug it in. This method is the simplest and takes the least amount of planning. The main thing to take into consideration is where you'll want to place the snake. Typically, you'll want it in the middle of all your mic'd instruments to make it the easiest for everyone to reach. Then, you'll need to measure how long each cable will need to be in order to reach the snake. That second step isn't even completely necessary. You can just use a 25-foot cable for all the instruments and tie up the excess to the frame of the instrument. That'll make it easy from one season to the next if you want to change up the layout of your mallet instruments. Everyone will still have a long enough cable to be able to reach the snake. The downside of this is the amount of time it can take to set up at performances. Each performer will need to take their cable to the snake to plug it in. If you have a small ensemble, then this won't be too bad. But as the size of the ensemble increases, you'll start having traffic jams since everyone needs to plug their cable into the snake. Now let's move on to daisy chaining. The basic idea behind daisy chaining is to think of the XLR as an extension cable that you connect together. The outer instruments will connect their XLR into an extra cable that's strapped to the instrument next to them, and so on and so on until it reaches the snake. This avoids the issue of all the students walking to the snake to plug in their cables. You can still use the stage snake with this method just as the previous method, but this still leaves you with one student plugging in all the cables at the stage snake. The next part of the daisy chain process involves one of these. This is a stage box and this is the breakout snake. These are made by Planet Waves and Diderio. They're both part of the modular snake system from Diderio. They can accommodate eight XLR cables and they have this connector. This is a 25 pin connector for the Diderio modular snake. These can be placed at certain spots of your ensemble depending on how it's laid out. And then you run one of these, a modular snake, to your mixer and use a male XLR breakout to plug into your mixer inputs. This will allow you to have fewer performers running to your mixer or snake to plug in cables since you're combining eight XLR cables down to just one modular snake. Daisy chaining can be a huge help in reducing your setup times, but it takes more planning and forethought to make it as efficient as possible. Before you start buying any cables, you should create a cabling diagram. Here's one created by Kevin Shaw. I'll put a link in the description to his Project Rise website where you can download this diagram for free. This diagram will help you figure out how many XLR cables you'll need of each length, as well as how many breakouts and mod snakes you'll need. You should start by creating the layout with all of your instruments. Then you can see these thinner black lines with the measurements above them, which represent your XLR cables. The general rule of thumb I stick with is a 10 foot cable gets you all the way across a mallet instrument and a five foot cable gets you halfway. Let's draw out an example for one microphone cable. If we start from Vibe 1 at the top left, it needs a five foot cable to go from its mic to the next vibraphone. Vibe 2 will then plug in two cables into Marimba 1 next to them. One for Vibe 1's mic and one for their own. Marimba 1 will then plug in four cables into the breakout box identified here, two of their own cables and two for the Vibe mics. The thick black lines identify how many modular snakes you will need and where they'll go. Then you can also go the extra mile and identify what channel each cable will plug into to make everything as seamless as possible once you start putting it all together. In this example diagram, there are 13 different performers that need to plug in mic cables. And instead of having 13 people running to an audio snake, you now only need four people to grab the modular snakes and plug them into their breakouts. Everyone else only needs to plug in XLR cables into the instrument right next to them. One downside of this system is the 25 pin connectors. They're infamously fragile and it's really easy for a performer to accidentally bend one of these pins, which will make the whole snake useless. The other issue with these specific breakouts are the XLR connectors. 
There's something off with the sizes of these XLR connectors and cables will often get stuck and are really difficult to disconnect. An alternative to using the D'Addario modular snake system is to use Cat5 breakouts instead. These are special boxes and cables that function similarly to the breakout snake and stage box. But instead of using the 25 pin cable, it uses a Cat5 ethernet cable. Multiple companies make these types of breakouts. They tend to be more expensive, but you can save money on the Cat5 cable since it's significantly cheaper than the modular snake per foot. A must have for any group using a daisy chain setup is this guy. This is a special type of XLR tester that's great for daisy chain setups. This is what a typical cable tester looks like, and if you have a daisy chain setup, you can probably tell immediately why this is a problem. You need to be able to plug both ends of the cable into this box to test it. And that's difficult when it's strapped down to a marimba. This special tester makes it a lot easier. It has two parts. One is called the sniffer, and the other is called the sender. The sniffer is what will tell you if the cable is working correctly. And if it's not, it'll give you a code to tell you what's wrong with it by looking at these lights. And then you refer to the sticker they provide in the box. You can plug this into the female end and then plug the sender into the male end to check it, or you can send phantom power to the cable from your mixer. This is critical to make sure all of your cables are working. You should be testing all of your XLR cables at least twice per season to make sure they're good. It'll also reduce a lot of headaches when you're trying to troubleshoot any issues. One thing to keep in mind as you're planning this out is the cost. These different daisy chaining methods can be more costly than that simple method we talked about at the beginning. You should put together the cabling diagram and price it out to make sure it's the right choice for your ensemble. There's no doubt that it's worth it for large and competitive ensembles because of the amount of time they can save you during setups. But if you have a smaller ensemble that's working on a budget, then it's probably better to stick with a simpler setup. There's nothing wrong with it, and daisy chaining won't add any type of audio quality. It just makes it easier and faster to get everything hooked up. So that's it for this video. If you made it this far, then give this video a like, and don't forget to subscribe to help support the channel. And we'll see you in the next one.